Light and dark mode. So this is gonna be a fun one because I'm gonna show you how to take this layout right here that we worked on earlier and make it a light mode. So I'm gonna show you the different techniques and the thought process that goes behind creating a light slash dark mode layout. Additionally, there's gonna be a challenge at the end where you take this layout, which is actually a layout that was created by another student in yesterday's challenge, and I'm going to have you create a dark mode version of that layout. Then I want you to submit it to me. The instructions for submission, as always, are in the YouTube description. We're gonna take a look at these tomorrow and see what you submit, and we're just gonna learn. We're gonna learn about what to do and what not to do. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Keep on following along on the 30 Day UI UX playlist. Watch from the beginning if you haven't yet, and let's get started. All right, head on over to lesson 10, light slash dark mode right here. And you probably recognize this from a few challenges back, this little kind of like airline ticket card. This is what we're going to be using in order to demonstrate um, how to turn something into a, um, a light mode in this case. And then we're going to go ahead and work on this one. Your responsibility will be to turn this into a dark mode. So pay attention to this one right here because this is where you're going to get the information from. Okay, so... The first thing I'll do in order to create kind of like a light mode version of this design, because clearly it's a dark mode version, a lot of dark values here, um, is take a look at the background, which is on this frame. And so you might think that's a black background. It's not black. There's a little bit of blue mixed in. So always check the color. So if I click on fill and I zoom up here, we'll see there's a little bit of blue mixed in because it's not pushed all the way down here into the right. Um, so we want to maintain the colors as much as possible. It doesn't mean you always have to have the same color, but what would be the opposite of this value right here? Well, it'd actually be like somewhere around here in this area. So I wanna have a little bit of blue. I don't want it to be absolutely white because then it's gonna throw off the next change I'm gonna make. So for instance, um, notice this color right here, the, the card background color. It's really the same hue as this, but it's just a little bit lighter right so if i had a white background here or here rather then i wouldn't be able to do that same approach where the card has a lighter background because you can't get lighter than six f is right f is did i say f six f's <laughs> which is the color code for white so we leave a little bit of blue in there so now we take this element and then we can simply just grab this color right here and just to see make it white see how much brighter it is yes the card looks like absolute ass at this point but we're going to fix all that stuff so the next thing that i want to adjust right now is it looks absolutely ridiculous having this this teal border around everything because it doesn't work well with these colors it does over here it's very high contrast so if it's high contrast here we sort of want it to be high contrast over here but it's not currently because we have white and then a bright teal color and then a bright background so really we have to make this part darker so yes when you're making a light mode sometimes you'll make have to make things darker if that makes sense and this is such a, a, a small one pixel element making this dark isn't isn't like we're making the whole design dark so what i'll do is take this and we'll just make it darker. Now, I wanna see what the context of it looks like, so I'm gonna zoom out, change this color here, and we can make it darker, all right? So we could go probably anywhere, like right around here if we want, or down. And we don't necessarily absolutely have to stick within the same hue. We could always like move the slider over if we want it to be more blue, like that, and that works fine as well. Okay, so next up, the next thing I'll change is this little, element right here look at how it's applied right here the background of this circle is the same color as this background pay attention to things like that so if i do this grab that there we go good now this icon in the middle probably makes sense to use this color because over here the co the icon color is the same as the stroke color all right so you want to make sure things are consistent in how you're applying color and changes to the color. So I'll just grab that, there we go. Next up, this background right here, or this element, it's actually a stroke. And so that stroke needs to be this color. And then there's another outer stroke right here, which is the color of the overall stroke in the back. 
unless I can't get it. Uh, oh, okay, I guess there might be a duplicate. Let's move things. Ah, yes, there's a there's an element behind this. So if I go down here, if I pull this up momentarily, all right, we click here. Well, let's just lock it, and then we select this element in the back. There we go. Sorry about that. Now we have, I'm being all slow and stuff. Now we have this kind of how we want almost. So that's clearly not right. Um, let's see here. So we have the background of the page. And then the uh, there's this lighter color right here. And it's slightly lighter than the actual card background. So we have to pay attention to that. So for that stroke, let's see here. Is it going to change this? Yeah. Okay. So what we could do is, let's see here. If this is a white Ah, uh, okay, so we can't quite make this background white, all right? Very important to, to take note of these things. Um, so what I'll do is just grab this again. We're going to come like right around here. Now we can go ahead and grab this element, which I believe is the wrong one. There we go. And we're going to change the, the, um, the actual stroke color here. I'm gonna make sure this is correct. One second. There we go. Change this stroke color to white. Okay. There we go. That's a more accurate translation um, for this section. Okay. So next up, what I'm gonna do is work on the actual type. Clearly we have contrast readability issues. It looks like garbage. So we can select this whole card um, unfortunately, things aren't in here, so what we could do instead is just grab everything. When you do that, you come down to Selection Colors right here. It's going to show you all the colors that are selected as a part of this selection. Clearly, this one right here, the real bright teal color, is going to be our main text color. So what I'll do is just kind of grab the background, and I'm going to make it darker. Oopsie, I'm not sure what just happened. I hate when um, sometimes this happens. <laughs> I can't drag it around. Like it just automatically selects whatever I choose. This is actually a good color. Um, it, it maintains the blue still and all that's working pretty well, I think. So let me continue on. Next color is going to be, I believe, this color. And this simply needs to be, have a little bit more saturation to it. Uh, a little bit more contrast rather. This didn't get selected, so we're gonna grab this. There we go. And then this outline, if you notice over here, is not a high contrast stroke. It's lower contrast. So we're gonna take the stroke color and put it somewhere over here. Just enough so that you could see it, but it's not high contrast. Okay. So there is a light mode version of our card, which would work completely fine. So now what we can do is, just for the fun of it, I'll show you how to set this up, is we'll create a real quick toggle button, all right? So the way we'll do this is, there's, there's multiple ways, but a quick and easy way is to take the frame tool, F on your keyboard, drag out a little kind of a rectangle around that size, and we're going to give it a fill all right, and so for the fill, I think we'll just give it this background color, and we will also make it a pill-shaped, okay? Now I'm gonna take O on my keyboard for the ellipse tool, and somewhere in the middle, just kinda put this, uh, get this situated so it's right, um, well, I guess we'll put it right here. Now you take both of them holding shift, select b both of those elements, hit auto layout, and then make sure to adjust it so that's to the left center, meaning we could pull this out now. Now the degree in which we pull out should really just be two of these without padding in the middle. So take that nine value, put to zero, oopsie, or this 10 value, put to zero, there we go. So now we can just put this right here and that gives us a good idea of what the width should be. I'm gonna delete that. All right. Now for this white portion, we could probably just make it this teal color. 
All right, and that's fine for now. Maybe we could give it that stroke, that stroke treatment. Like if I click on this and I copy that and then paste that, yeah, we could do that for the fun of it. Okay, so now what we'll do is copy this, paste it over here, and this time change the colors and the orientation. So if I change this to the right, you just click a line right, and then we'll change the colors to be consistent with everything else. So now I'm just gonna change the background or the fill to white. We'll use the stroke color, um, this darker one, I think it was right here. I think that's correct. And then we'll make this, this color as well. Now you would really want a label on this adjacent to it or using like a little moon icon so people understand for context, but this will do just fine. It's a pretty big button as well, but don't worry about it. So then to simulate this real quick, we go to prototype, we select it, we drag this over on click. We want to change to smart animate 300 milliseconds is fine. And then do the opposite. Take this back. There we go. Smart animate. And that's just a quick and dirty way of getting, um, you know, a toggle button. So if we click play now and I click on this, oh no, there we go. There we go. Here is our light in dark mode variation. Okay. Very cool. So now it's going to be your turn. And in your turn, we're going down to the light dark mode challenge page. And this is actually a submission from another student um, who submitted yesterday from yesterday's challenge. Um, and I really liked it because this is an editable graphic, meaning you can change the colors of this element, which you're going to have to. We want you, I want you to make a dark mode version of this right here in your design right there. So you see the before, so you keep it here, you can reference it. And then I want you to do your work in the dark mode version right here. So obviously the first thing you're gonna start off with is changing that background color. All right, so right now it's pure white. You don't have to go absolute black. You know, you could go, you can make it a dark, very dark blue if you want. You could do that completely. It just, it needs to be dark. Uh, it has to be a big difference, right? From light to dark. So think about how you're going to do that. And when you s select this element, notice all the colors that are showing up right here. So if I change that orange color or something um, to like blue, it's going to change everything. So mind these colors. It's, really, it's going to be really interesting to see how you tackle all of this stuff. Remember, don't try to add stuff or move stuff around. You're not doing that. You're changing the colors and that's it. Okay, so all of the, um, the rules are right here. Integrated dark mode toggle switcher and place it in nav bar. That's one thing I want you to do as well create your own little nav switcher and prototype it. Um, ensure the dark mode variation maintains the same color scheme, except darker, obviously. Ensure good contrast and readability of the type. And keep it simple. Don't introduce unnecessary embellishments like drop shadows, gradients, and a lot of stuff. So you just want to change the colors. Then go ahead and submit it. Submission, uh, submission instructions are in the YouTube description. And we'll check these out tomorrow. Keep on watching the 30 Days UI UX series and definitely subscribe up. If you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com. Oh my God, that's a lot of spam and I will shut up. Let's get started.